Boise Bubble, it's a local podcast hosted by married couple Natalie and Shane Plummer. And their most recent podcast focused on a scary experience that Shane recently faced during a routine solo mountain trip. So we've got Natalie and Shane here to tell us a little bit about that, but also give some advice because this was also a little bit of a learning experience too, right, Shane? Yeah. So, okay, so tell us about this podcast. It was a little different for you guys, though. Explain why that this particular one is kind of a small deviation from what you usually do on Boise Bubble. We've talked about a lot of topics through the various episodes. The mountains have always been something that is fascinating for me, and everybody in Idaho loves getting up into the, into yeah. the mountains, so people love hearing about that. But most times people are just sharing the good stories, the beautiful things that they see. Mm -hmm. This one was a little bit different. I went up with one intention, and I had some challenges and problems that I'd never encountered before. So when we talked about it, we decided to be a little bit more vulnerable and share some experiences and hopes that other people might learn uh, from my experience, maybe go out there a little bit more prepared and hopefully we have fewer incidents and you know uh, rescue missions up in the mountains. Yeah, because this is something that you typically do, right? It's not like you were just like on a whim, oh, I'm going to go hiking. You're actually pretty familiar with going out and mountaineering, if you will. I love being outside. In, yeah. uh, during summertime, fall, even in the spring, I, I, I get a lot of a winter cabin fever. So uh, I spend as much time as I possibly can yeah. Yeah. up there. Okay. Yeah. All right. So tell us a little bit about this experience. I, we don't want to give too much away, right? Because you have a very extensive podcast. People can really hear the deep details of what happened. But a kind of a cliffhanger overview, if you will, what is the situation that, that occurred that got you concerned enough to where Natalie was super worried, we'll get into that here in a moment, mm -hmm. but also that you're like, oh dang, I need to share this. In summary, I'll say that I had a plan A, plan A didn't work, so I had to go to plan B. Uh, and I hadn't researched it adequately, and whenever I got up there, I found myself with a lack of water, okay. not enough water. And um, the result was some pretty serious heat exhaustion on the way back. Mm -hmm. I'd never experienced anything like that before. I've been in some pretty precarious spots but this one was scary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so you, for the first time, were actually really frightened. Yeah. Okay, so then you're going out, you experience this by yourself, um, and then you get back, though, luckily safely, right? Mm. But then you have to tell your lovely wife. <laughs> so, so what happened, Natalie, when you heard what had happened to your husband? Well, this isn't the first time he's had precarious situations. Because um, <laughs> okay. this has been many years yes. of kind of figuring out how this is going to work where I'm comfortable and he's comfortable um, because it's very important to him and I, I don't maybe understand it to the level of why, but I need to be supportive. So um, I knew something had happened and he didn't want to talk about it, um, but hearing, um, I guess, how frightened he was, I mean, it, it, is, it is not a comfortable experience to know yeah. that your spouse is out there alone. Um, we talk a lot that um, nature doesn't care about you, they're, yeah. it's gonna eat you. Mm -hmm. um, and so yeah, it's, it's not a comfortable experience, but I, we also felt like that conversation was worth having. Yeah, yeah, and then after your experience and then his experience combined, is that what compelled both of you to share this on your podcast? Because you know you're not alone, mm -hmm. right? You know you're not the first wife who's like a little concerned about her husband's need to go out and adventure, and you're not the first husband who's like, I gotta go out and climb a mountain because it brings me joy, and then you find yourself stuck in a situation. But not a lot of people really kind of talk about these things, like you had said, right? When you scroll through social media, when you look, it's always these beautiful pictures of waterfalls and mm -hmm. mountaintops. They don't really talk about the challenges, the real life challenges that could be dangerous, that can be encountered in these type of situations. And I think that one of the contributing factors is that men, whenever we go go up there, there's often, yeah. um, we're dissuaded to talk about the negative things. It's like we want to share the successes, yeah. but we don't often talk about the near misses or the close brushes with disaster. Yes. And so uh, maybe there's a stigma in talking about those things that if we can get over that, then I think that we might be better prepared getting up there. Yeah, I think that's perfect. And I'm so glad you said close brushes with danger, right? Like, because that that truly is what this was for you. It was a very close brush, right? Oh. You were right on the edge there. All right, so did we give you enough fish hook there to listen to Boise Bubble to really find out what truly happened? But what we want to get to here, though, is the fact that it was a learning experience, and there's some things you want to make sure that people know that they can do to be prepared. So you have a pack here with a couple of items that you'd like to suggest that people really focus on when they go in the back. Absolutely. Okay. Um, whenever I go up into the back, country, I always take some basics. The first thing that I always take is a GPS. Mm -hmm. All sorts of manufacturers out there, but something that you could send at the very worst case in SOS is incredibly helpful. Mm -hmm. La worst case scenario, I can push the button. Somebody's going to come find me in a few hours. 
Okay, uh, very important. The other thing that I bring is I always bring water filtration. So I have some kind of a kit with a couple of ways to filter water. Um, a lot of people, they see these beautiful streams and they think, oh, let's just go dig in there and Not just Not a good drink. idea. No. Not yeah. a good idea. Mm -hmm. You have to be mm -hmm. really careful. Um, and another thing that I always bring is um, I've got a fairly robust uh, first aid kit, but one of the things that I always take is a tourniquet in there too. So yes. I would rather take a little bit of extra weight in a first aid kit just in case mm -hmm. than be wanting it later and not have it. Yeah, that's yeah. a really great point. That's just lovely. Awesome just in case you need a tourniquet. Like these are the <laughs> things the wife loves to hear. One <laughs> never knows. And hence why Natalie's like, you know what? I think I'm going to pause on hiking in the back country with you, babe. You can take it all. <laughs> yes. And the yes. other yes. thing that I always bring is adequate water. I have a water yes. bladder in my bag and then I have a backup Nalgene bottle that I always mm -hmm. take too. But even though when you're prepared, sometimes, like you said, you can run into some situations where it's just, you can only prepare so much, Yeah. right? I get yeah. nervous about people going up there and thinking, it's Idaho, it's the weekend, let's go ahead and have a great time. Yeah. And they just set forth and they start driving. That can be good sometimes, but other times you might get yourself into a hairy spot if you don't do a little bit of research about where you're going. All right, so where can people listen to the Boise Bubble so they can hear more of the story and they can learn further? Um, it is on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify, and you can find us on Instagram at the Boise Bubble.